Welcome to the Calculus Jungle, ladies and gentlemen. Our title today is Slope Fields, and uh, we've got some real exciting pictures and graphics to look at today. They're going to make some pretty wild images. But basically, to paint the big picture today, we had been talking about uh, solving a differential equation or a diffie Q using a method called separation of variables. And, and so that method right there, the, when we separated the variables, whoa, I got a really fat pen right here. Uh, before the next slide, I'll try to go down to a slimmer size. But anyway, when we separated those variables, what that, that was called an analytic approach, um, which is not a big deal for you guys. But it's, you know, sometimes we might call it an algebraic approach or it's more accurately called an analytic approach. Today, we're going to look at a method called slope fields. And uh, instead of an analytic approach, this is more of a graphical approach, as you probably guessed, just by looking at the picture we had on the first slide here today. So this is a graphical approach. When we solve our Diffie Q, we may not actually have an equation per se, but we're going to have a visual image of what the solution does indeed look like. And um, so we're going to have lots of wild pictures that might look like this one when we're all said and done today. So we're going to start off with kind of a conceptual approach, and then we're going to move into some specific examples. But we introduced a term called the general solution yesterday. And the general solution was the solution where we separated the variables, we integrated, and then we solved it for y. But the problem was we still had a what? A plus c in there, or, or some kind of an unknown constant. And because of that unknown constant and the fact that that c could take on any number of values, we said there's actually still an infinite number of solutions, and that created kind of a family of solutions. And I'm going to use this term loosely. I'm going to put it in parentheses. But all of those solutions were what we sometimes call parallel to each other. Not parallel in the sense like two lines are parallel, but like, for instance, maybe the thought that two parabolas could be parallel because they never actually intersect each other. And that was the, that's what happened with our general solutions the other day. There's an infinite number of solutions, and they were all, quote-unquote, parallel to each other because they never intersected with each other. For instance, we might have had a solution that looked similar to this. y equals c sub 1 e to the x squared plus x power, maybe. And maybe we said that was our general solution. Well, because the C here could be any different number, it could be a 1, it could be a negative 2, it could be an 8, it could be a 10, there's actually an infinite number of solutions. And I, if I graphed every single one of them, they would all kind of have this type of parallel behavior with each other, never intersecting with each other. So what's going to happen today when we create our slope field is this is now a graphical solution. It gives us a visual image of what all those general solutions might look like if we put them on the same um, you know, graph paper or set of axes or so forth. So we're going to get a quick snapshot of what they all look like. Basically, I think of a slope field as if kind of like a detective, you know, as a detective gathers clues and you kind of piece the clues together to solve the mystery here. Basically a slope field, we're, we're, we're gathering all the little individual slopes together and when you put all the slopes together, they create this beautiful image and, and let you in on the picture. But if you only had one clue, you wouldn't be able to solve the mystery. Just like if you only had one slope by itself, you wouldn't be, get a glimpse of what the real solution looked like. It's, a, it's the combination of all the slopes together on one graph paper that gives you the true image. Okay, we're going to start off with some very friendly problems where we just practice sketching a particular solution if they we're going to assume that they've already given the slope field to us. So, um, and remember what this slope field is, is it's giving us a visual representation of all the general solutions that might be linked together. So for instance, for our first example, they might tell us that the particular solution happens to pass through the point zero comma negative two. Now, even though there's an infinite number of solutions here on this picture, there's only one of them that actually passes through the point 0, comma, negative 2. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dot right here. And now from that point, I'm going to pretty much follow the breadcrumbs. If you follow the stream here, so to speak, it's going to shoot you this way or it's going to shoot you up and down. Notice I went, I used up all the graph paper that was... Uh, 
you know, uh, available. We went all the way through this edge and then all the way down through this edge. If we stop prematurely, they're going to ding us a point. And this is actually a pretty common free response question on where part A might just ask us to draw something like this. Uh, let me switch pen colors here. Maybe instead they said, you know what, the particular solution passes through negative 1, negative 0.5. Uh, let's see, negative 1, negative 0.5 is right around there. Um, you'll notice this one's going to kind of swoop this way maybe, um, and then it's going to get very close. And now, technically, it's it, there's kind of this asymptotic behavior almost um, through the middle of the graph, and so this curve's going to kind of swoop down. It's going to get really close to my brown graph, but never quite touch it. They don't technically intersect ever. Um, switch pen colors one more time here. Um, maybe they said that the particular solution goes through 0, 1. So I'm going to put my dot right there. This is a very unique solution. Be very, very careful here. If you actually follow the, the, the breadcrumbs, so to speak, that are laid out before us, it's going to be perfectly linear in both directions, I believe. This is a very unique solution. Um, and, and it's the one and only linear solution to this curve. Uh, one more. Let's do one more on this curve. We'll go with orange. Maybe they said the particular solution passed through the point negative one comma one, and they wanted you to draw the what you know show what the solution looked like. So negative one one looks like that. What we do is we kind of have this behavior, and then it's going to shoot off the screen in this direction. Um, notice on all four examples, I used the entire graph. I went throughout. I went you know all the way through the graph paper in both directions. And, and so these are just four different examples of what a particular solution might look like. There's an infinite number. We could have picked any other ordered pair and, and drawn a curve through there. Okay, on example number two here, I'm going to give you an ordered pair. We'll start off with a real friendly one. Uh, maybe they said the solution goes through 0, 1. Feel free to hit the pause button here and uh, go, you know, attempt to draw the solution curve on your own. I'm going to put my dot right there. We're going to kind of be, uh, you know, flat for a moment, and then we're going to shoot off down this way, and then we're going to curl this way. So we have a very nice point of inflection right in here. Just uh, we're concave down to the left of that point, concave up to the right of that point. Um, or maybe they said, you know what? Maybe my curve goes through the point, um, maybe one comma zero. So we got to go through right there. Looks like my graph's going to come through here, through here, and through there. You know, they're not going to get crazy specific as long as our graph's within reason and does, you know, as long as your picture's, you know, fairly similar to my purple one here, you're going to get full credit for your sketch. They're not going to be crazy picky on these. That's the good news. The first point I want to take a look at here is the point 0, 2. Again, I, I want to urge you to try to hit the pause button here and, and take 30 seconds to attempt to draw your own particular solution that passes through the point 0, 2. Perhaps yours looks like this. We're going to start there. We're very steep. We're going to curve. And then we kind of have this asymptotic behavior through here. And I want to encourage you, it's, it's steeper over here than it is over here. Um, kind of, it's kind of skewed and attracted to that. Uh, you can kind of get a glimpse of the asymptotic behavior there. Um, another good point might be, let's say we want to go through zero comma negative one. Here's where the linear solution would be. We'll follow those breadcrumbs exactly as they're laid out, and our solution curve would look exactly like that. Or if they wanted us to go through. Um, Maybe they wanted us to go through the point four comma zero. Four comma zero would look like this. We'd be kind of steep, and then, shoo. and I might have brought that back a little too much. Maybe I should be more out here, but it would look something like that. This is this is a little trickier one here. If they wanted us to draw um, something through the point, uh, uh, maybe zero comma two. There's actually it's it's hard to tell, but there's actually uh, these little line segments, that's a, that's actually a horizontal line segment. So we actually, we have a maximum right there. The curve's going to drop, and then it's going to be asymptotic to the y-axis. It's, it's fairly hard to tell here. They maybe should have put a few more line segments on there to show us the behavior. Um, 
So this was kind of a tougher one. I wish there was a little more detail, but that's another popular graph that we'll see a lot with slope fields. Uh, here's a graph that I found when I was uh, Googling slope fields. I thought it was kind of a cool image. I thought it il really illustrated how there's an infinite number of solutions within these slope fields. Um, and, and you'll notice that probably, I don't know, was there probably 20 of them that are drawn here. What I want to emphasize here is this, this idea of parallelism. It feels like the graphs are intersecting in this region here, but truly they're not. They are microscopically close. We'd have to zoom in, you know, several several times to prove that there is a you know a little bit of daylight between the graphs. Um, you know, they they are very compacted and close, but they do not intersect. Every solution on here is unique. Um, for instance, if I gave you an ordered pair like 0, 1, and I said draw the one solution curve that passes through 0, 1, you can rest assured that there's only one curve that goes through that point. Um, it's a unique solution. There's only one. Okay, we're now going to construct our, actually, actually build our first slope field. So far up to this point, they've all been given to us. Um, generally, these are worth two, maybe three points on a free response question, but generally two. It's kind of a catch-22. It's going to be the easiest two points you've ever earned on a free response question. But at the same time, it's kind of time-consuming. So what's going to happen is you're going to be rushing through this because conceptually it's very easy. But yet it's we need to be very meticulous and careful to not make any careless mistakes. So here goes. What if they said my first... This is a differential equation. Y prime equals XY. Um... And actually, this one, just as a side note, is a separable Diffie Q. We could solve this one analytically. We could get all our y's and dy's on the left side and all of our x's and dx's on the right side. But that's not what they're asking us here today. They want us to use a domain of negative 3 to 3 in a range of negative 3 to 3. So there's several points we're going to attack here. And here's how we're going to build our slope field. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to construct a monster um, table here. Mine might get a little messy here, but uh, and what I do is I kind of split this upper left-hand corner and I say, okay, all my x values are going to run down the side. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and we'll squeeze in the 3 here. And then all my y values are going to run across the top. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to evaluate the slope at all of these points. Now you notice there's actually, uh, it looks like a, a grand total of 49 points here that we need to find the slope of. And that's the time consuming part. Um, for instance, um, let's start with this first, this first row across the top. I'm going to substitute a, a negative 3 in for my x up here, and then I'm going to substitute a negative 3 in for my y, and I've got a slope of 9. So at that one point on my graph, the instantaneous slope is 9. And then moving across that row, I'm going to get a slope of 6, a slope of 3, a slope of 0, that's my favorite one, then a slope of negative 3, a slope of negative 6, and a slope of negative 9. Um, again, let's fill in one more row here together, then I'm going to turn you guys loose and let you fill in the rest of the table on your own. Um, at the point negative 2 comma negative 3, the instantaneous slope is 6, and then the slope's 4, slope is 2, slope is 0, slope's negative 2, slope's negative 4, and then the slope is negative 6. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to encourage you to hit the pause button, fill in the rest of your slopes, and see if we agree. Okay, so now you've gotten a good taste of the time-consuming part, but uh, as long as we're careful, um, we're not going to make any careless mistakes on these. We don't want to give any points away here. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to take these instantaneous slopes and we're going to go draw 49 different little line segments to represent the slope at each one of these points. The phrase that you're going to keep hearing me say over and over again is the phrase relative steepness. You know, how do I exactly draw a line segment with a slope of 9? You know, how do I make sure that it's a slope of 9? Well, basically, as long as it's steeper than your 6, and then as long as your 6 is steeper than your 3, we're going to be in good shape. And that's how they're going to grade our slope fields, according to relative steepness. Okay, now we're ready to take all those slopes and transfer them on to our, our little grid here. I'm actually going to do, this is going to sound funny, I'm going to do the slope at negative 3 comma negative 1 first. 
I'm gonna let's start with this point right here, negative three comma negative one. Uh, the table we just made said that the instantaneous slope at this point right here should be positive three. So here's what I'm gonna do. Starting with that point, if the slope was really three, we know that the rise is three. I'm gonna go up three dots. There's three over one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna aim at this point up here while I'm drawing the slope down here at this point. And I'm gonna do a little line something right there. And I think it's it's very helpful if we have something to aim at. Um, I think it's gonna really increase the accuracy of your graph. Now the point underneath that one is supposed to have a slope of six, so we need to make it slightly steeper. I don't, yeah. It's very tricky. This is a hard one to start off with. And the point underneath that one had a slope of 9. So that one needs to be even steeper than the 6. So like we said, it's all about relative steepness. Um, they're not going to get out their compass and their rulers and all that stuff and measure the exact angles and so forth. But we need to be pretty careful. And our slope here uh, at negative 3, 0 is 0. Uh, the point above that has a slope of negative 3. Again, don't be afraid to go down 3 points over 1 and kind of aim down there. So I'm going to kind of have something to aim at. Then we're going to get a little steeper, maybe-ish, and then even steeper than that. So that's what the first column looks like. Um, I'm going to go ahead, hit the pause button, try to let you do the next column, see if we're, see if we're on the same page. Okay, here's what my second row looked like in orange. Um, if you start way down here at the bottom, my slope was positive 6, and then positive 4, positive 2. I think if you compare those slopes together, um, you know, they do get less steep as you go up. Then I hit the 0, negative 2, negative 4, and then negative 6 at the top. I'm going to go ahead and hit the pause button one more time. I'm going to finish my slope field. I encourage you to do the same and, and just really be careful as we do this first one. Okay, here it is. By the time we're all said and done, hopefully we have one like this. You know, it's it's very symmetric with respect to the y-axis, and that's something we'll talk more about tomorrow and, and some of the, the shortcuts we can look for. But here's the first one. Let's go get one more, and we'll call it a day. Okay, very similar to the last one. We'll call this example number two. Let's say that our Diffie Q said that y prime was equal to x plus y. We're going to go over the same domain, the same range, just to keep it simple. Now, just as a side note, this equation, believe it or not, and I challenge you to prove me wrong here, this equation is not a separable Diffie Q. No matter how hard you try, you could not get all the y's and dy's on the left side and the x's and the dx's on the other side. But again, I encourage you to try to prove me wrong on this one. So how do we solve a first degree Diffie Q if the variables are not separable? Well, surely enough, you, I'm sure you're assuming that there are other tricks out there, and indeed there are. But for the scope of our class, we're going to rely strictly on our slope field to give us a glimpse of what the solutions of this Diffie Q look like. So go ahead, set up your table. We're going to use the same domain of negative 3 to 3, same range of negative 3 to 3. Go ahead, construct that table, and then come back and see if yours is the same as mine. Okay, here it is, my most colorful uh, table ever. Uh, let me let uh, in on some good news. The good news is I've never seen an actual AP question where the table was this big. I've never seen one that actually used 49 points. So they'll either shorten the domain or they'll shorten the range. It won't be quite this time consuming, but nonetheless, it's good practice. So let's go ahead. Let's transfer them over onto the next grid. And uh, again, be very meticulous, very careful, and focus on your relative steepness. So let's make sure that negative 6 is steeper than negative 5. Okay, by the time we're said and done, here's what ours should look like. I want to make just a couple of key notes. Again, I think it's very challenging for, for say, like, for instance, up in this upper right-hand corner. You know, what's the difference between, you know, a slope of, say, 5 versus 6? Very subtle difference. Again, we're not going to split hairs. We're going to do the best we can to make sure that 6 is steeper than 5. But again, we're not going to lose any sleep over it. Here's what we want to be exceptionally careful with. Make sure that all of your slopes of zero are really zero. Let's make sure all these bears right here are as flat as they can be. We want them to really be horizontal. Also, notice all the slopes of negative one right here. Do you see how they form a nice solution there? There's one solution that cuts right through those points right there. That's one really nice solution. So let's make sure all of those are lined up really nicely. Other than that, just be as careful as you can. And, um, and again, remember that this slope field is a very powerful image. It gives us a glimpse of not just one solution, but all infinite 
general solutions within the domain and range that we graphed. So hopefully that makes some sense. Again, don't be afraid to hit uh, pause, rewind, and rewatch, and uh, we'll catch you tomorrow in class. Take it easy. See ya.